let's let's hit it. All right, welcome everybody to Keeping Up with Cash. It is your host, Cash Money Morgan. What is up, you guys? The school year has started. The grind is on. The apartments have been moved into, and the school year is ready to rock. So obviously, to get off on a great start. I had to interview the one, the only, Louis Shakes. Yes, sir. <laughs> How you feeling tonight, Louis? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Doing good? Yeah. We're, we're currently in Louis' new crib. Yeah. I'm just got in my cribs. crib. <laughs> it was like, who wants to record in whose crib? <laughs> I don't want to do it. Like, <laughs> his is way cuter than mine right now, though. So that's a vibe. No, just a wall. <laughs> just just <laughs> two, walls. two walls. <laughs> <laughs> the two walls, but they're like good looking walls. All right. Uh, Louis, so before we get into this, just kind of give us your bio, you know, where you're from, why you're in Springfield right now, you know, <laughs> so the people can know who you yeah. are. My name is Louis Shakes. I'm 24. I was born uh, right outside of Paris. And then all my family's obviously in France. I'm here in Springfield for hockey and school. It's going to be my third year here in Springfield. I played all over Canada and the U.S. and ended up in Springfield a couple of years ago. So here we are again. So how did you hear of MSU when you're in France? Like you just happened upon it on Google? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> no. So basically I left France when I was 14 and then I played high school hockey in Canada then I moved to Toronto and then El Paso, Texas, Boston for three years. We're always playing college. And then I transferred here because that's some buddies I played with in Texas. Hunter Cooley, Alex Rubin. Shout all these guys. Shout yeah, out. what's up, guys? <laughs> uh, all these guys, they um, they were all playing here and I was looking for a new place to play. They were looking for players and it all worked out that way. So A vibe. Okay, so out of everywhere you've lived, what's the best one so far? What's your favorite spot? It's also different. You know, a lot of people ask me that, and I don't think I can pick a favorite because they were all my favorite, but in different ways. Okay, what's the worst spot? He's like, (laughs) Springfield. No, I actually (laughs) love it here. People are like, oh my God, Springfield. I'm like, dude, it's awesome here. I don't know. All right, okay. Um, Worse. I don't don't think I get it worse. There's no spot that you're like, uh, all right, okay, okay. Indifferent. All right. So Louis has a really cool, interesting story that if you're in Springfield, especially if you're in the hockey community, you know this guy, you know what he's up to. He's low key blowing up, I would say. I mean, what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, if you want to say that, you can't. I'm not going to say that. Okay. So can you kind of dig into your story a little bit? Yeah. So basically, when I was six years old, I was diagnosed with a really rare skin disease called toxic epidermal necrolysis. It's the highest branch of Steven Johnson syndrome, which had me burnt to the second degree on over 80% of my body. And then my organs, my lungs, like I was burning inside out. I had no more skin on my body. I was airlifted to the burnt unit in Paris. Did this happen when you were born? Well, no, when I was six. When you were I, six? Yeah. I, after a normal school day, I came home and I was super like tired, flu-like symptoms. My face was red, but... And I was confused because that day everybody was asking me if I was okay. If are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, dude, I'm like just normal school day. I'm tired, but and then at night I started getting super itchy. And then after a couple hours, my mom was like, okay, we need to go to the hospital. And then they didn't figure out what was going on. Sent me home, and then the next day I woke up and had blisters head to toes all over my body. And then my skin just started falling off and started burning literally inside out. Oh my gosh, was how painful? One to ten. I, I can't when I think about the pain nowadays it's like it makes me feel numb like I'll never ever ever experience anything more painful than that it, wow. was, it was I don't know it's it's crazy <laughs> it's <laughs> that's wild. wild yeah and then when I transferred here two years ago I was in a really good spot in my life really happy and I was like you know what how can I do more I why is it that I get to live my life the way I am, chasing my dreams, traveling all over North America, playing hockey, and there's people that are dealing with what I had to deal with and, and other things too, but in my in my life, it was like I was feeling some sort of survivor's guilt, and I was like, I can't live like that anymore. I, wow. I, I, I need to do something, and I was just skating around. When I moved here, all my buddies would like to go rollerblade around campus, and uh I was just on my daily ride with my buddy Garrett and I look at him I'm like dude it'd be wild to skate across the country and he's like dude come on you can't you can't do that <laughs> he's like, I'm like bro come on bro like- he's, like, he's like you can't it'd be sick but you can't do that like no way and I didn't say anything I was like hmm all right and then I uh, I was in the shower at home and I'm like dude like I can't get this thought of my head I I need to do this 
I really need to do this. I don't know how, but I need to do that. And I was like, well, you need to find a reason why, because you're not going to do it just to do it. It wasn't one of those things where it's like, hey, look at me. I'm skiing across the country. Right. Like, so, yeah. You know, I needed to find a purpose for that. And then I was like, well, hello. <laughs> like you survived the really rare Ding skin dong. disease. Yeah. Hello, bud. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? And so, yeah, sure enough, uh, I was like, oh, you're onto something. And then one thing led to another. And here you are. And then the journey's over. And back yeah. in Springfield, ready for school to start again. <laughs> so just to touch on your disease. So did you get over that when you were six years old? Or when did that kind of go away? Yeah. So the thing is, there's no cure for it. At least there wasn't then. Now there's more medical, like, you know, options out there. But um, for me, just went away one day it started getting better and then my recovery process was really long had to learn how to walk again i was supposed to be blind uh my skin was and still is very very sensitive to the sun which was a whole issue on this trip which an issue that we managed really well but um so yeah i mean you know recovery process was probably about two three years i couldn't get my skin directly exposed to the sun for a long time so if i went outside in the summer i had to wear long sleeves and stuff so what was that like mentally growing up well after some like that you're really like i mean you're beat mentally you know like i was a very emotional kid like you would tell me no like for the smallest little thing and i take it so personal and i was like oh my god they're mad at me and i start crying and then i i got some help when i was younger my parents got me some help and you know i I was going there every week and yeah i i realized that there was a lot of strength in what i faced and it was you know something that you learn to learn to understand and and use for for your life and i'm now like looking back i i would never want to change my story i would i would want to go through this again you know like i don't want to feel that but like that was such a turning point in my life that hey dude like you you survived something pretty wild you yeah know? so what what else what what would be impossible for you to accomplish with your life because you've already done that you mm-hmm. know so like if that didn't stop you then why should something else and exactly then, I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> sorry i was getting emotional here like that was so good <laughs> and uh yeah just had to you know uh, my goal when I was sick and when I was dying was to one day play hockey in North America. And instead of when I was sick, really focusing on what I was going through, I was more so focused on how can I get to what I want to be accomplishing in my life. And that allowed me to move from France on my own when I was 14 and to wow. my love. So, yeah. And then after I got a shower thought and I turned into a reality. <laughs> so yeah. I it, mean, it's pretty incredible to go through something like that at such a young age. And then you know, just keep chasing your dream and accomplishing what seems like the impossible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's get into mm-hmm. the dreams. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're in the shower, yeah. you know, you listen to, I'm different. Yeah, yeah. I'm different. Like getting ready. Like, mm-hmm. okay, where are you at now? Now I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, like right now or back then? You so mean, so you just had I, the idea to mm-hmm. skate across the yeah. country and, you know, they're like, no, you can't do it. You can't mm-hmm. do it. So then what happened? Uh, well, then... I kept it to myself for a little bit because I I knew I was going to do that. I knew it. I knew it in my heart. I was I had decided I was going to do it and there was no other way around it. But how do you go about that? How do you get started? Like, it's almost like a business marketing yeah. thing. Like, I have no experience in that, but I have a goal and I want to do that. So I was like, okay, roll up your sleeves, cowboy. We're going. <laughs> and then I, uh, I looked online for the Stephen Johnson Foundation, which uh, the foundation I have here for the disease. And I tried calling him and for three weeks i'm trying to call him but i'm not getting an answer and i'm like dude america like, I'm, oh, I'm like or your apartment just, complex just i don't know you literally <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> and, too soon <laughs> yeah Jeez. okay keep going and so then i'm like all right well i was like if if they're not I, i'm gonna call one more time as i'm going to class i'm like i'm gonna call one more time if that's not if they're not answering maybe i'm not supposed to be doing that yeah right now sure enough i call right it beeps it beeps it beeps that it always started hello and i'm like oh got real <laughs> it got so <laughs> real right there and i'm like oh man all right so then i tell him my story i tell him what i want to do and then she puts me in touch with the highest researcher in the field at Vanderbilt university okay the next day i'm on a phone call with dr phillips from Vanderbilt, 
and I'm telling her what I want to do. And then she puts me in touch with all her team. Then a couple of weeks later, I'm on my friend's podcast, Dan. Um, and next thing you know, my friend here in town reaches out to me. She's like, I had no idea you went through this. Um, and I had no idea you wanted to do this. Because the thing was, before I hopped on this podcast call, I knew I needed to get it out in the world, my idea of skating across the country. But I I didn't feel like I was ready or like, I don't know. I was always like kind of waiting for the right moment. And then... Which there, never really comes. It's something that I find. <laughs> never a good moment. Right so moment then to start something. My buddy Dan, he knew that I needed to get it out. Because he knew about it. He was the only person who knew about it. And... um he knew I just needed to to say it and, you know, just go for it. So at the end of our call, he's like, so uh, I know you've been preparing something pretty crazy. Do you want to share that with, with our uh, listeners? And, I, and then he just starts laughing on the Zoom call. And I'm like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like, and then I was like, well, you know what? Let's, let's just do it. And then I said, that was the first time I said it. And then a couple of weeks later, we released some videos and, so Melanie, my friend, she introduced me to Ryan, who's a movie producer in L.A. And then I got a hold of Ryan. It was really persistent because he was really busy at the time. But I was like, no. like I So are you still in school and doing hockey at this time? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's well, crazy. And I, back then it was still calm because I wasn't training for it yet. Right. And where's COVID at right now in that time of the story? COVID at is still here. I mean, it's Springfield, so there's no COVID here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was coming from France when I trans... <laughs> <laughs> when I <Merca>. trans- <laughs> yeah, when I transferred from when I came from France from being there in the summer to here, I was like, "There's no COVID here. Like that's not a thing." Like, okay, all right. We just don't be like, we just don't pretend like it's a thing. I was here. like, all right, whatever. And so, yeah, um, Ryan's producing his movie, but I'm calling him like, dude, I need to get a hold of you. Like, I need to talk to you. You need to hear this. Blah blah blah. blah. What do I need to do? And one morning on my way to class again, called him. It was 7 a.m. in LA. I didn't realize. So he wakes up, he's like, hello. I'm like, hey, it's Louis, what's up? <laughs> and then I told him, he's like, all right, well, make a video introducing your project, your idea, and then we'll go from there. So then that's what we did. And then got that to him. And uh, he was like, well, okay, this kid's actually serious. Yeah. Let's do it. So what is the matter of time here? Like from so, the calling the Vanderbilt lady so to that was in this sep- guy? Yeah, that was in September, the phone call, Vanderbilt. Ryan was probably about... Let's say October. Okay. Okay, so it's happening fast. Late October, yeah. And then uh, met Ryan in St. Louis for his premiere. And then after that is when we started uh, talking a little more about the project after Christmas. We started talking a bit about it more. And then after this summer, uh, this past summer, when I got back here in town, that's when things got serious. Uh, We'd have weekly calls and... And stuff like that. It more again after Christmas, but um, between the two, like I, I remember I was just going in stores. Like when I was visiting Boston, I was going in stores, and I was like, "Hey, like, can I talk? Can I talk to manager?" <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and then I was like, "Hey, like, this is I'm Louis Shakes. This is my story. This is what I want to do. Do you guys want to be a part of it? Yes. No. Okay. Cool. Move on. I have a stack of like maybe like three to four hundred business cards like that." Wow. And then sometimes I'd get a manager's email and then every single one of these business cards I've sent an email to s- describing my story, seeing if they want to get involved. Like invest in... Or like be a sponsor or like yeah, something, you know, something. like I, I was like, whatever you think, I I just need help. I can't do this alone. So... Wow. And I got a lot of no's, but I got some yeses and that's what you got to focus on. You know, I, I, I got um, TB12, I got all sorts of sponsors that... So are these, what are these sponsors, like hotel room food? Like what are they exactly paying for? Depends. Uh, some of them paid. Some of them were like product support. Like my supplements first form, I got I got all the supplements I needed. I mean, you clearly saw that. Yeah, he has uh, enough supplements <laughs> for like life. So. Um, what else? Roan gave me some clothing uh, for when I was skating and after. Um, Elixir is uh, like a CBD company for like, inflammation stuff i don't know put on your muscles uh it's really helpful in my journey then uh ice skin is a skincare company in la they were giving me sunscreen and, wow. and also money to help us with gas and food because doing a journey like this costs money so right we were really fortunate that we had some support um 
and yeah i mean it was it was pretty special to see people believe in your story and what you want to do and also bet on you because what happened from between here and new york nobody could tell you know like yeah <laughs> i mean it's three thousand miles so uh a lot can happen every day is different and uh yeah people had to take a serious risk and and i'm glad they did and i hope they feel like that too so yeah Okay, so you just got these sponsors, and then what happened? So, well, these some of these sponsors literally came like the last week. I got sponsors and and stuff like my my producers worked really hard and got some sponsors literally like the day of the start and stuff. Wow. Like RV too. Like we we I started skating. We didn't have an RV yet. <laughs> Because I told my producer, I was like, hey, like, whether it goes through with you guys, which I knew it would, but I was like, if you guys for some reason can or cannot get involved, like, I'm doing this. Yeah. If I have to carry my backpack and my tent with me all across, I'm, I'm going to do it. That's some I commitment. said I would. Yeah. I, I said I would, and I was like, okay. So now, my, pa- my previous semester was probably the hardest time. Well, the past year was hard, but the last spring semester was wild. I was in over 18 credits in school. Yeah. Playing hockey, training for hockey, working, and also um, training for 10 for 10 for my journey. And I was training like six hours a day. So my days would start at like 4 or 4.30 and they would end at like 1.30 or 2.30 sometimes. And I would just... So what are you sleeping? <laughs> That's an other. <laughs> I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, okay. But like, I was like, it was wild. And so this semester was so busy and so hard that i often said that during their journey i'm skating across the country and i'm like i feel like i'm on break right now like i don't have right i don't have to go to the next meeting or the next class or the next this i can just be there all day right it's because you're doing something you love even yeah with podcast stuff or whatever this does not feel like work this feels like fun you know and but it is work (laughs) no no, yeah it was definitely work but like even like the preparation i loved it but it was just so like like draining consuming i mean you know you're preparing for something big you get your name on the line like because at the end of the day like i had to take the risk of being like hey you know like if i don't make it it's my name attached to this like anybody involved even though they're around, like they're gonna be able to detach, detach themselves from it. I can't. My name is stuck with this failure, so I have yeah. to live it through. And I never had a doubt that I wasn't gonna make it, just because I knew how hard I prepared and why I was doing it. And I think the purpose was bigger than any training I could have done. I mean, obviously, I, that's good. I could have never done it without the training I did, but uh, the purpose and the why, and and you know that that was bigger than anything for sure do you have like a training coach or anything or are you just yes my friend dan that was i was on his podcast he's my trainer um and he he helped me the whole way to build this training plan and then help me prepare for it shout out dan not all heroes wear capes that's right that's right (laughs) they were rollerblades yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah there i put those away for a couple (laughs) that's funny uh okay so then how did like how did you get to the start then you know what all this happened you Mm -hmm. have the sponsors everything's ready to go yeah so before the journey we went to st louis we flew a week early to la because that was like the last thing as i want is to fly in the day before and my legs are dead and i'm tired so yeah flew in a week early i stayed with my producer ryan and then um we were just working we're trying to find find sponsors and meetings and events and stuff like that all week and it worked um and then june 1st and we you're st- not in school at this time or you took off and school was over like oh, literally okay. like school ended the day after that i packed my apartment because i didn't even have time to move my stuff on my own yeah. apartment packed everything and then i was off to la that same day oh my gosh i was off to That's la nuts. and like how do you pack for a trip across the country you don't know how long it's going to take you what are you going to be wearing? You're going to be skating the whole day. You don't know. Like, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I need to bring, what I need to leave behind. Hop on a flight to St. Uh, no, actually go to St. Louis. The next morning we had um, an interview. Uh, it's called Show Me St. Louis. Uh, it's a TV show there. 
Went to that, and then straight from there, we flew. It was the first time I was flying in a suit. It was so uncomfortable. Don't recommend. In a suit? Don't recommend. Okay, pop off, pop yeah, off. Don't you recommend. You girls in the airport like, oh, my, this man, d- the tension. I was like, stop, I'm hot. I want to take this <laughs> off. Stop. <laughs> no, but. Where's uh, Kim K at? Like? <laughs> I'm like, dude, like, where are my joggers? Come on, man. <laughs> and so, got to LA and then worked that whole week. So uh, what was the plan here? Like you guys had an RV going with you too? Or are you gonna just? Well, so Ryan lived in uh, lives in LA. Okay. So we got there, and then we're trying to find an, an RV, but with you know, COVID and all that stuff, it's like it's hard to find because a lot of people are traveling. It's summertime. Times right. are different. And so basically, I started at six. Well, I woke up at four a.m. there on the June first. I couldn't sleep, so I was like, I'm just gonna go there. <laughs> yeah uh and i just hung out at the beach for a while because you know you work for something for so long and then you're there and it's like whoa yeah like that was such a special feeling i mean it was wild and so i in the morning of i get there a couple hours early i'm having breakfast i'm stretching i'm sitting there whatever and then 8 a.m hits and uh it was time to go so dan and mike the videographer were there and then Ryan and Jen, the producers, they're on their way to pick up the RV. They're driving back to Ryan's to leave the car there. And then I'm skating. So then I have the support van follow me that Dan and Mike are driving. And then Jen and Ryan are now driving the RV. And then we met up later down the road. And the first night, we didn't really know how to operate an RV. We didn't know where to put it. And that we slept our first night in the Walmart parking lot. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I put on my store. I'm like, guys, where can we can, can where can we park an RV at night? I don't, we don't know. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, go to Walmart, go to Walmart. And yeah. Sure enough. I actually have seen quite a few RVs at Walmart. Yeah. Also, yeah. So both of those cars followed you the whole time, right? The RV. Well, the RV. The car. So the RV would go meet me halfway during the day, and then at night at the campground, and then the support van would go ahead of me every 10, 15 miles. And then I'd meet them, get a protein shake, a snack, water, and then rest for a little bit and then go again and then again and then again. So my team stopped every 10, 15 miles to go across the country. Wow. (laughs) Well, almost every time. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, tell me about the journey itself. What what was like the hardest spot? You know, how were your legs halfway through? What was going through your mind? Can were you listen to yeah. you know what were you listening to? Like I don't <laughs> Yeah, so He's like Drake the whole way, you know. <laughs> the the- one thing, no. <laughs> so basically, I mean, f- for all all the tea and the details, there's a lot of things I'm not going to tell you because I want you to enjoy the documentary as much as okay. you will. Okay. All right. Um From Rosie, you know, let us know dude, what is It's going to be of? like and and it sucks for me cuz I'm like, dude, there's so many things I want to tell you. Yeah. Uh but Arizona was wild because 116 degrees. Mm-hmm. I'm literally hallucinating out there. Like I'm skating and I'm like, it's so hot. I'm just like, at some. I remember I, I turn around and I see like a semi right there. And then I'm like, it seems really close. And I look again and there's literally no one. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's hot when you start seeing semi trucks right behind you. Yeah. And then... Um, what else? I mean, the mountains in Flagstaff were pretty wild. Uh, so you're just skating on the road. Oh, yeah. Like highways. Uh, pff, you name it. I, so are I, you supposed to be on the sidewalk in any of those situations? Well, or the like, thing is... He's like, remember when that traffic jam happened like that one time? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> well, there was traffic jams that were faster than cars then. But yeah. like, the thing is, America, the sidewalks are not the best. Right. I mean, you've all noticed that. In, even here in Springfield, it's yeah. like, oh, dude. So... And plus, it was too slow for me to be on the sidewalk, so I had to be on the road at all times. And so the highway, how did that work? I was on the shoulder. Okay. But sometimes the shoulder goes away, or yeah. like, there's no shoulder. There's debris on the shoulder, so like it would it would already be hard to walk on there. So imagine having wheels attached to your feet, and it's like there's pieces of tire, glass. I mean, you see it all out there. Like, I've seen some pretty wild things. The the thing I've seen the most on the side of the highway, and it's so random, onions. There's, what? I have seen so That's many... That's so disrespectful to onions. Like, Dude. Onions are great. Like, onions, what? Onions everywhere on the highway. I'm like, why? <laughs> like... I, That's so weird. Yeah, after tires, that was 
onions <laughs> weird i was so confused onions uh, deserve better <laughs> i mean yeah uh what else i mean and people are people are so brutal on the road oh, like yeah. they're like i've met amazing people when i wasn't skating <laughs> right but as soon as i was on the road people were terrible like throwing like frozen water bottles at me like i don't know like so was it dangerous for you to skate on the highway? Like, were there oh, a bunch yeah, of cars? Yeah. Well, imagine like you're... So sometimes the shoulder was pretty big, but sometimes it really wasn't. So yeah. imagine you're... I basically... At, it sounds really dark. It's not that dark, but like... <laughs> I had to be okay with losing my life doing this. Because yeah. I was like... When I get stressed, when I get scared, like that's when it makes it way harder and i was right. one day i was like dude like you're here anyways so like you can either worry about it and and you're not going forward you're gonna fail or whatever and or you just accept what you're doing and and that's it and you just let go and you just accept it and i was like you know what and i was like well the good thing is i can't see the cars coming so if something was to happen i it would just happen <laughs> like it I'm really not would just happen it. I'm not you know about it. yeah so like, i remember i'm in new mexico and i'm skating first i had to jump over a rattlesnake that was i thought it was dead but he was pretty alive so i had to jump Ugh, over it i guess fair gross uh i went to take a photo but i, I didn't feel too safe out there so You're i was right. like yeah you know what the photo is not that important right now yeah so i hop over a rattlesnake and then i hear the rumble strips and i'm like here we go and i look and there's a truck just swerving in the shoulder but when i tell you that he was close he was like less than half a football field he was like texting and driving or what or falling asleep i saw a lot of truck drivers fall asleep and that's why it was scary because i'm like dude like all it takes is for you to go like two feet that way and i'm i'm done yeah yeah and and it happened a lot of times where i was like okay like this guy like they're already close but this guy was really close and so swerves and then last minute just like swerves back out and he's like sorry i'm like sorry yeah i'm sorry dude sorry like, donate. Almost just, yeah like at least donate or something yeah, like, what? You know? but uh that and yeah i mean so tell us all the states that you went into yeah. and there's i you know there's like a lot of there's a, the top line we're looking at a map right now he's got a map on his wall the top line mm-hmm. bottom line a connector so yeah. kind of tell us start and the states you went through stop all that all so that, uh, this was from prior to the journey. Uh, I like to like visualize things a lot. So for me, it was easy if I had a rough idea where I was going to go through. The funny part is I didn't really do any... Uh, well, it's n- none of these are the exact right I took because yeah. that was from prior. Mm-hmm. Uh, the closest one to what I did is the bottom one. Okay. Uh, so I went from California, to Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana... Ohio. Um, I think after Ohio, there was West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What was, was the hardest state? I mean, was it Arizona? Mm, Arizona with the heat, but the real test was Pennsylvania because it was the longest one and the elevation there was insane. My mm. trip was 2,902 miles. 41 miles sorry Come on, yeah. get it right get it right yeah, ah! i skated them yeah so. he's like every mile count yeah, yeah. Like- and then it was one hundred and thirty-two thousand eight hundred and seventy-two feet i think Ooh. of elevation how many oh dang that's crazy to put in perspective I, that's like because when you say that to me hey i don't work in feet so i don't know what it means right but yeah mount everest is twenty nine thousand feet so i did four and a half mount everest in 45 days on rollerblades wow which was crazy. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna Yeah. Let's go. yeah. <laughs> I saw it coming. I know you saw it coming. So um did you just fly home when you were done then? No, so then we drove back to St. Louis and then we went to Nashville for a couple of days. An R V little road trip. So we brought the R V and the support van. Then the guy that rented us the R V came and picked it up from St. Louis and then uh we still had the minivan as of three days ago. Wow. Yeah. So so to backtrack a little bit, how did you mentally prepare for something like this before it started? Like whether it be family or mm-hmm. just by yourself, yeah. like how, how do you get ready to do a journey like that? Um, I think it's just, uh, to me, it felt like I was always ready. I just never believed I was or thought I could, 
if that makes sense. Like, I, I never had a doubt I could accomplish this, but in my life, I had never came up with the idea. I had never... That's why it came as a shower thought, because... Right. Never the best in my thoughts life, happen in the shower, man, or in a dream, like... I know. Like, literally. never never in my life did I think of doing this, and then one day it showed up, and I just felt like I could do this. Yeah. And had no doubt. And so, for me, I was like, if I can make my life a little more challenging every day, then when I'm going to be out there, it's going to be much easier. And now I sit there and I'm like, okay, well, my semester was harder than the journey because it really was yeah. because of how prepared I was. And I was, I was getting a lot of confidence too from my training and my preparation for this because of how serious I was taking it. Cause I knew that when it was going to get hard, I was going to look back at every single time I didn't, uh, or could have done better or didn't make the right decision in terms of my preparation. So you know, a lot of people were like, oh, why don't you go out just one night and this and that. But I knew that that one night I would hold on to it when I'd be having a hard time. That's good. And so I was like, you know what? Leave no doubt and be all in. And that's what I did. And it really works out for itself. You know, it's it's cool to see one little idea turn into like... Does, a dr- your dream time? in yeah. real life. Yeah. yeah, I really haven't processed it at all. Like I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm just confused. I'm like, is this first, real? Yeah. I, I've, I haven't really been, been in Springfield without this idea and this thing to work towards. So now what is life without my project ahead of me right now? Um, what, what, you know, so. I think it's important to keep dreaming. Mm-hmm. And even like, even with my own podcast stuff, it's kind of like, okay, we're going to do this this year. Well, what's the next, even like in life, your career, yeah. what's the next challenge? What's the next way you can impact people? Mm-hmm. And I feel like you've started something big. Well, what's the next thing, you know? Yeah. And, and it's funny as, and a lot of people ask me, so what's next? What's next? What's next? Right. What's next? <laughs> and i'm like dude i'm asking myself the same thing like what's next and so i got to times square moment i had dreamed about you had a carry s- bradshaw moment dude well, i know. was dreaming about that moment for so long was it amazing i've not been to new york yet mm-hmm. oh, dude, it's... but i got a work trip soon yeah. so i'm pretty excited yeah so all my for the past two years i'm picturing this moment when i'm training when it's hard and so the last five minutes of the ride, I'm like, oh, like, it's getting pretty close to be done. Like, do we, do you really want this to be over? Like, so I was going super slow. I was oh taking my, my God, time. I'm like, sad. I'm like in New York. I'm looking everywhere. I'm like, wow, this is pretty crazy. And then I get to Times Square and it's packed, like packed of people. So they, my team had told me where they were going to be and they were waiting for me with a little finish line thing to cross and. And I got there and I mean, I was running on three days without sleep because I had to skate. I skated like over 250 miles in two and a half days. How do you stay awake? And you're not, are you drinking, you're not drinking coffee. I, you're not doing that while you're skating. I t- listen, at that point, it was nothing else mattered but getting there. I skated through the night twice. So I actually. Red Bulls, like nothing? Monsters, no. Monsters, pre workout. Okay. But like, I. I would take breaks, but they were like two hour breaks or an hour breaks, but yeah. they were never like a night of sleep. So I skated a full day. I slept a couple hours, skated a full day again, skated all the way through the night and then through the morning, took a couple hours, skated all the way through the day, through the night, and then I finished in Times Square. Wow. And ugh, it was crazy. And so. I got to Times Square and I mean, my parents flew from friends to be there. That's and so cool. It was just like the perfect little scenario, but it was so perfect that I was like, I, it was like blank. I was in shock almost that I was there and it was over. So I remember crossing that and for a second I look around and I'm like, so like what, what now? Like tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow I'm waking up. I don't have to put my skates on. Some people, so I've, I've been in situations or some people too. It's like, when you do something so awesome, you almost hit a depression afterward because you're like, well, nothing's going to top that feeling, yeah. that moment. And I think it's hard to bounce back, but you just got to keep reminding yourself, like, yeah. there's going to be more moments. This yeah. is just the beginning, you know? And a lot of people talk to me about that. And the thing, I was getting frustrated because I was already aware of that because, you know, that, that was part of my preparation. To, yeah. And so a lot of people, my family, especially my parents, were like, okay, like, don't, like, you're going to get depressed, blah, blah, you're going to be careful, blah, blah, you're going to be depressed. But the thing was, I was aware of that. And I was just waiting to have some sort of feelings like that to just be able to, like, 
karate chop them away you know like mm-hmm. i was ready for you i saw you come in like get away yeah and the thing was people were talking about it so much to me that it was almost scary because i'm like well like stop like you, you guys are like, like they're almost, speaking into existence you're all, yeah that because i learned one thing if i learn one thing on these journeys that you sp- everything we anyways we'll talk about it okay. but like, like that's chapter two yeah, so. yeah, yeah that's that's something else <laughs> but like i was like it's like you guys are putting it into my brain i'm not feeling like that right now yeah so i'm gonna be right now and then tomorrow i probably won't feel like that either and you know it it's not like i feel like that all day it's just like coming back to normal life and you know with the school and everything like it's uh I'm trying to. Like, you're good. I'm you're sorry. good. Do your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> um, I'm trying to like figure out, you know, what I'm, where I'm at, what I accomplished too, because, yeah. you know, when it's hard, like, what's a world record? You know, like when you, like, we accomplish a world record, and it's like, okay, but like, when you really think, what does it mean? How do you process that? You know, so. Yeah. Like you just did something incredible. How do you go back to, you know, working in eight to five or taking, you know, going back to class? Like, which, it's kind of weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. And which I was excited about, you know, like I'm excited to be going back to school, but it's just like reorganizing your life and kind of almost letting all the chips fall and be like, okay, this is where I'm at right now. But the thing is, some chips are still up there. Like my journey, I, I don't, there's moments I don't even remember. And then sometimes I look at a photo and I'm like, oh, like it unlocks so many memories. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just being patient and, you know, giving myself some grace and not being too hard on myself. But also there's like a fine line right now of not being too hard on yourself and really just getting back to work. So I'm excited for school to start and training and hockey and, you know, it all all starts again. So it'll be good. Yeah. Y'all got to go. Uh, if you're in the Springfield area, you got to pull up <laughs> yeah. to MSU Bears yeah. and cheer on Louie. That's right. So what would you say was your biggest like learning takeaway from this journey and everything that came with it? Whether it be, you know, getting sponsors, getting prepared or just the journey itself. Yeah. Um, for me, it was a lot of people say they want to do certain things or you know, they tell you, hey, I want to do this with my life. When am I going to do this for a job and this and that? And I'm like, okay, all right. You want to accomplish all these things and that's amazing. You're aware of that. You want to do that. And then you take a couple steps away and then you just watch. And everything that they want to accomplish is the opposite of how they're living. And it's fine. It's okay. But it's just sad because we all have so much potential and that's another, yes, I, want, I did this journey for the awareness and stuff, but I also want to show people that when you have an idea and you, you're you relentless and you work and you're humble and you're patient and you stick with it, then you can get a lot done. So, um, yeah, like for me, it was really just showing people that you can accomplish yeah. way more than we think. And and that little voice like that was telling me I'm tired. Oh, can you can you actually skate across the country early on or it was just a voice. Yeah. Like when your mind's checked, when my mind was checked out out there, my body was still able to put a foot forward and keep going and that's really what I want to show people is that like, hey, if you have an idea and you want to do something, then then do it because it's your life and you know, I came close from losing my life and I just think it's sad that it's what it takes too often for people to realize that whoa, I got to do something. Yeah. It sucks. Like I, I'm like, I want to use my story for people to be like, okay, well, I didn't go through this. I didn't almost die. I went through other things, but like, hey, life is precious. I need to do something. And so that was the main thing for me. Um, and other things I realized through this journey is that we speak everything into existence. Like during our days, we talk, we talk, we talk to talk and we put a lot of words out there, but we don't really pay attention to what we say. Yeah. And then out there, I wasn't, I didn't listen to music at all. The entire way? No music. Oh my gosh. I can't even For, get through my job without listening to like something. I'm like, what? I didn't listen to music for safety reasons for traffic. Yeah, that but makes al- sense. Also because when I was in skating as fast as the beat, it was really discouraging. So mm. I'm like, dude, I feel like I'm going so slow even though I wasn't. But like yeah. the music's going, it's going, it's going. And so you talk to yourself then? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do to too. Well, I do too, yeah. Talk to myself. And I also wanted to hear all my thoughts from the highest of the highest to the lowest of the lows and it was cool to see how fast my emotions would change out there like i could go from like being so happy and the next checkpoint my team would be like i was pissed off at everything yeah 
And then 10 minutes later, I was fine. And so every time I went through these moments, it was cool because I, I was able to build momentum. Okay, well, like you just went through something hard, but you did it. You did it. You did it. And so, yeah, like we speak everything into existence. I remember my buddy Joe, uh, he rode across America on his bike last summer. And he joined me for the journey for a day with his buddies. And um, we're just, him and I were just on the road together talking. And for me to feel understood, it I needed somebody that could understand yeah. what I was feeling. Someone, someone that had been in my shoes, even though our journeys were very different. Because right. he was on a bike, I was on skates. Different route, different reasons. But he could, we're also very similar. And so yeah. it was like... We talked about how we speak everything into existence, the wind. We were talking there and I'm like, dude, like not once has the wind pushed me away from traffic. Not once. Literally 30 minutes later. The wind is so strong, it can barely stand up and it's like going from the left side. And it hadn't happened in like 25 days. Like, and then I kept saying to my team after like, guys, like be careful what you talk about or what you ask for because it will happen. Like... Albuquerque, it barely ever rains there. My whole team, like, oh, you know, it, it's not going to rain anytime soon. Next thing, 45 minutes <laughs> later, I put my skates on. <laughs> I'm going up this giant mountain and there's like thunder, lightning, rain for like two days. It was crazy. It was, you just kept skating in it or what? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I didn't take a single day off across. I just wild. skated every day. So how, how much money did you guys raise? Do you have that? On? Yeah. So we raised for the journey because obviously that journey, you know, we, in order to raise more money for the cause, we needed to accomplish the journey. Without the funds and with without raising funds for it, we could have never mm-hmm. created a documentary and all that. So um, for the journey, I think we raised between thirty to 40000 Wow. To pay for the RV, the food, the gas. And then for the cause, I think around $10,000 which is great. Yeah. Um, but then the cool thing is because we created a do- we're creating a documentary that will come out in a year or two years, depending on the funding and, and all that, um, then a percentage of this documentary will constantly be given to the foundation I raised money amazing. for for the life of the movie. I'm also going to be linking the yeah. website and everything too. So if you go to the bottom of the episode, you can also donate as well. You know, yeah, keeping up with cash that. cares, yeah. you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, oh, that's funny. Man, so I guess what do you have now for you? I mean, obviously hockey and school and mm-hmm. everything, but I guess dream goal wise. Yeah. Is there anything besides the documentary? Is there anything kind of that you, is you know you had any shower thoughts lately that you're like hmm this could be kind of the next move yeah i mean you know just slowly coming back to i have like short-term goals you know like being settled going back to school uh i mean as of a week ago it was to find a place found a place yeah we're uh, in the place what's up we're in the place uh, yeah and then yeah i want to play pro hockey so that's definitely one of my goals and um i feel like once i focus on all those things and they start taking care of it their own then you know one day i'm gonna wake up another shower thought and yeah we'll be like hey let's do it but I, i've i've been doing some thinking so i'm, I'm Very, coming up with a couple just you know things. stay on his chain like yeah, he's got you know, things well, going on that was that was good but what did you eat on the trip <laughs> like caesar salads only <laughs> oh steak on fridays so <laughs> what how many calories do you think i was burning a day i don't even want to know i don't tons <laughs> i have no idea so um i started the first week my nutrition for my training was perfect like calculated to the gram like i wanted everything to be perfect almost psychotic but <laughs> the first two weeks of the journey well the first week of the journey was like this i was eating all my meal prep my meals rice chicken broccoli guac whatever and then i realized i'm like dude like i cannot physically eat this amount of food every day yeah because i was burning anywhere from eight to ten sometimes twelve thousand calories a day i lost 25 pounds in 45 days um and so basically i had to meet my calories so i was just eating fast food milkshakes protein shakes like 
Yeah. And then it, it make you feel awful? No, because I was burning so much and, you know, calories are calorie. I had to... And he goes to the bathroom and, like, after I did, Taco I, Bell. You know what? I didn't have a problem like that at really? all. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. Like, we're talking about it the other day when my producers were like, dude, the way you were eating, I just had to eat, like, yeah. anything and everything that was thrown at me and, yeah, did just fine, so... That's shout cool. Out, there you go. Shout out to McDonald's, Burger King, yeah. Wendy's. I can't... I, can do all the reviews now about the fast food place i I know it all i know i've tried them all those are the next sponsorships honestly i can't eat fast food now i'm immune to it for i'm good yeah so what's your love life like i have to ask because you know i'm a girly pop you know and i don't i don't have any reality tv right now yeah so i mean obviously you went on this so how long did that even take in total 45 days 45 days okay i guess now you're back and then you kind of don't know what you're gonna do next so where is you know just right where it was when i left off oh, you know yeah. it's just i mean like in the streets or <laughs> i mean you were in the streets <laughs> I'm, I'm, pointing to the map. I'm pointing to the map i was, I was like wait was yeah. I? <laughs> no, no. um yeah i mean it's one of those things where like especially at that stage in my life you know i'm in college and obviously with hockey we're a little older when we get in school yeah i'm gonna be 25 in october super senior like so <laughs> sometimes for me it's hard to like I'm, i've always been friends with older people like my my buddy dan is like two three years older than me yeah and like i don't know just and and sometimes I have, a, I have a hard time finding myself and like people around me here yeah. because yeah like partying is fun and all that you know i'm the first one to enjoy a good party or cool but it bar, gets old but, real quick but i'm like dude like i get a life to live like i'm not yeah. gonna this would have gone down at boogie you know right <laughs> like, no literally um so i was like i want more for myself and it's hard for me sometimes to to, to find that in someone and um and i mean also because i'm i'm never at the same place you know yeah. i'm from france and then now i'm in springfield for six months that i know of but then six months what happens i Mm -hmm. move again and i don't know where and i don't know where so in that sense it's hard for me to build like uh, a relationship or anything of that because not that i wouldn't want to but right and i don't know i i guess you know it's like it's also like okay well what's love supposed to feel like you know like we're getting really into this but like you oh, know what shoot, i know but bro. you know what you know what i mean like if i asked you that well how would you answer that you don't know shoot. well i know like my you know love like god's love my parents love yeah but shoot that, i don't that, know that, yeah. the love that i thought i felt like yeah exa- stab exactly exactly so, so that's what i'm saying i just feel like i know pain really well like, oh, oh, <laughs> who hurt you <laughs> no, no. Oh my God, no, but you know what? so like <laughs> I try not to put too much thought into this and then just... What would be the ideal age to, like, get married and settle down and, like, maybe start having kids, you think? Oh, there's an age for that? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I think for me, like, I think I would be ready to have kids at, like, 30. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, again, I, I, I think it's, like, very situational, if yeah. that's the word. Like, yeah. you know, I... If it was with the right person, if I'd been with the right person for a couple of years, like I, I'd be fine doing this now, but like I haven't. So it's like, yeah. okay, well now when is that going to, and then you see all sorts of things happen around you. Like this person's four years younger than me and they got four kids in a house. I know, it's crazy, and then this person's man. five years older than me and, and they, they haven't figured it out. They don't and have it's a fine. job. It's, like- you know, it's cool. <laughs> so, but it's hard not to base yourself off people around you. And, yeah. and that's something I've kind of gotten better at where I'm like, you know what? everything happens the way it should and i just let the chip fall where where it falls and we'll see but yeah yeah i'm not one to to just get into something to get into something like no that. i'm just, the same way i'm like i if, if anyone's gonna waste my own time it's gonna be me i'm exact, not trying to have yeah, anyone yeah. else waste my time exactly like, and it's like you know what like relationships are supposed to be something that 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 bring a good side out of you yeah. but i'm like you know what until i really find that then i'm gonna keep doing this like i'm gonna keep bringing that side of myself yeah, on my own as you I should can. and so yeah i mean you know I, i'm i'm not worried about it and i'm not not out there like yeah go louis yeah. <laughs> so yeah sorry, sorry. i'm not trying to laugh at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah i mean whatever happens all happens, right all I guess. right he's vibed up he's just chilling yeah. just like the rest of us you know <laughs> out here okay so as we're wrapping up 
Uh, what piece of advice would you give to someone who maybe is on the brink of wanting to do, you know, something or just piece of advice for anyone yeah. based on this incredible journey and every knowledge and piece of information you have now? Get started. Take that first step, you know, like I, I had to and I did. And one step takes you to another one, another one. And then you look back and you already run a marathon and then you keep going. And it's like, I'm across <laughs> the country now. So it's just like get started and nobody else is going to do it for you yeah if you there's never going to be a right time there's never going to be a right time so stop wasting your time and nike just do it literally literally (laughs) it's like we're we get in our own way so much more than we realize and that's like it it drove me crazy when i realized i'm like dude all this time you've wasted just because you were listening to yourself too much right thinking about it and just the haters. Did you have a lot it. of haters? You have a lot of people who were like dissing you on social media or in real life or anything? I won't, I won't bring out the names. Uh, oh, well, I did, gosh, I wasn't hoping. I, <laughs> I'm not trying to get canceled, bro. <laughs> I didn't have that many, no. Uh, but again, I I use negative like um, motivation a lot. You know, like a good tap on the back is always nice, but yeah. it's not what fires me up. He's like know? printing off your negative tweets and like hanging it on like the, you know, the weights in the gym and like just going I, well, off you say that on my ipad i cropped all these people's faces and what they said and i had it printed yeah so she said she's called me out but no i i'm just that guy i just had a feeling i forgive i don't forget and it's one of those things where like okay well you say i can't do it i'm gonna do it twice yeah you know Boom. and um one of i don't know some former teammates or whatnot used to come out where you're gonna do it and and again i hate talking about this because it's not like they're not that important, but I'm just, right. I don't want to, you know, give them the time no, of the day. No, but, um, no. people but are, stuff like that, it does hurt, you know? But and I'm like, I'm like, oh, all right, cool, man. So then yeah. like when you're skating and it's hard, yeah, you think about the good things, but I'm like, psh, you get a whole lot of people to prove wrong. And, and yeah. that's, that fires me up and that feeling of accomplishment and then you uh, finish it, and then everyone reaches back out to you. How well, does that lo- make you feel? Oh, my God. That's, like, crazy. <laughs> you did that? Oh, my gosh. Oh my, I had people be like, I'm so glad I was, like, sending you messages the whole way. I'm like, dude, we haven't spoken in, like, three right. years. Are people, like, hitting you up now that you're kind of, like, Yeah, dude. yeah. Yeah. And it's like, come on, dude. Like You have to you be know. so careful with, oh. you know, people, like, taking advantage or who you it's can trust. Because you never know people's intentions when you start, like, doing stuff for yourself and really, like, yeah. starting to get some action. And and the thing is, like, I do everything out of, like, a good place in my heart, you know? Like, I give everybody a chance and benefit of the doubt, you know? But, yeah, it's wild. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, dude, where were you when I was yeah. sleeping three hours every night because I was grinding every day and I couldn't go out or couldn't hang out? Or yeah. Do it. It, was, it was, like, all upsetting back then. And now I've done all this stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, like, I always knew you could do it. And I'm like no get out of here yeah you know? like yeah. i don't even say that i'm just like whatever thanks yeah, yeah thanks. Scene. thanks scene scene appreciate you thanks <laughs> left oh, on red so nice with the worst la- smiling emoji you're like dude what's the up down the upside down smile emoji like, yeah the, uh-huh. oh man well louis killing it so obviously if you listen to my show you know that i like to end the show with the same three questions favorite song favorite quote and what do you want your legacy to be Oh shit! Favorite uh, song. No, no, no. Uh, we're gonna be all spicy. Oh, all well, spicy. Okay. <laughs> uh, Plume by Nekfeu. Okay. French rapper. Uh, he's better than Eminem. If you guys could oh, understand French. Saying a lot of words here. I'm saying it. I said it. I said it. I said Very it. Very controversial. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of heat from that one. I'm like, dude, you guys can't understand French, so leave me alone. Uh, and then favorite quote. It's actually a poem. It's right here. Um, uh, yeah, read it. Pop off. All of it. Well, no, I mean, no. just do you, whatever uh, is your favorite okay. part. I'll just read the my favorite part. So it's called yeah. Invictus by William Ernest Enley. And it ends with, uh, it matters not how straight the gate, I'll charge with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. And that's really motivational for you? Yeah, it just goes back to nobody's going to do it for you but yourself. So you can sit there and just hope it happens or you can... Yeah get started and make it happen love it so, love it yeah. all right so what do you want people to remember you as what's your legacy mm, that's such a good question it's so thank hard. you i know i asked it <laughs> mm, i want to be remembered for somebody who's selfless 
and uh, who just, you know, tries to be a part of something bigger than himself. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Have you been able to physically see people impacted by what you oh did? Oh, my God. It was, that's what made this whole journey incredible. A lot of people would come up to me and be like, thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. And I'm like, no, it's the other way around. Yeah. Have you met anyone with the same skin disease? Uh, I did. I did uh, meet, I did meet somebody here before the journey started. Then a lot of them reached out online. Very cool. But then I met some people with similar things or completely different. And just like cry in my arms and be like, you're, you're changing my life. That's amazing. Uh, I, we met this, oh my God. We met this, uh, after my hardest day of the journey when it was 116, I only skated 30 miles that day. And we get to the hotel and I'm really down. I'm upset. I didn't skate that well. And this lady at the hotel, uh, we tell her what we're doing and stuff. And then we start talking and her son has a really similar condition to what I have or had. And uh, we start talking, we start talking, we share stories. And then I tell her how important it is that she's there and being supportive and, and there for her son. Because my mom was. I mean, I have photos of her all over mm-hmm. my <laughs> But like, uh, and then she just looks at me and she's like, you give me hope that my son will be strong one day and that he'll be able to to live a good life and, and impact others too. And, That's amazing. Oh, i and, and you know, in these moments... In these moments, you feel alive. I a lot of crazy signs happen on the road too. And then it's like, even if I, when I tell those things to people, they're like, "How? Like, come on." Yeah. But you literally couldn't make it up, and so, yeah, it was just very special. A lot of times, I was reminded of why I was doing this. I never forgot, but it was like amplified it in me, mm-hmm. and also it always showed me that I was right where I was supposed to be, and That's that amazing. was really rewarding. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Louis, for coming on the pod. Is there anything you want to plug right now? I mean, obviously the documentary. Yeah, I mean, everything's on my Instagram at Louis Shakes. Yeah, we'll uh, have it linked at the bottom of the episode as well. And I appreciate that. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> everything is in my bio on my link tree. There's the fundraiser for the disease for Vanderbilt. There's the fundraiser for the documentary. Looking for sponsors, investors. Uh, and then, yeah, just check it out and then a lot of the journey is posted on my on my page as well so all the cool updates little videos we made and uh stay tuned for what's next very cool very cool (laughs) and tell my listeners i love you guys for sure obviously the school year is starting and if you know me you know that i skipped a lot i skipped a lot of classes in college and so you need to not do that Take, Please don't. Take all your classes seriously. <laughs> take advantage of all your school professors. I mean, I'm saying like not take advantage of them, but I'm saying <laughs> take advantage of their knowledge, of their wisdom, of their advice. I'm so blessed to be able to have so many great mentors and professors that I can go to for, hey, I have a question. Hey, I'm not go- like, can you help me with this? Like literally network the heck out of college or high school or whatever, because you never know where those connections are going to be. And also, if you want to start your own podcast go to the bottom of my episode and use my affiliate link and you can go ahead and get started all right thanks guys for listening love you guys so much have the best week (laughs) bye bye